Hi there, welcome to CLM's online service. Whether you are here every week and you've been with us from the start or whether this is your first time, maybe you're a visitor, maybe a friend sent you a link this week, well, you are so welcome. We're delighted to be joining together today to worship Jesus. If where you are, you can access the YouTube chat on your phone or device and, and let us know that you're here. Just type something in, say hi, and keep comments coming through the service. It's great to hear from you and it's great for others also to know who is in the room as well. Kids, we're pleased to have you with us today. Hope you're doing okay. If you haven't got one and you want a meeting sheet, go and download one now from the website forward slash kids. In just a moment, we're gonna to head to the band. AJ and Sarah with musicians are gonna lead us in our praise and our worship unashamedly. We are gonna lift up the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, the author and perfecter of our faith. And we invite you not to be a YouTube viewer or audience, but a congregation of worshipers scattered and yet gathered together online to lift up his name, the name above every name. If online church is new to you, we just invite you in these moments to enjoy the presence of God, to listen to the songs, allow them to touch you and to minister to you. But together, if we know the goodness of God, let's enter in, maybe stand up and step out of your seat, turn the volume up and sing out. Let's worship together, let's go for it. Praises for them. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, to the 
stretch these wings now I can fly I walk by faith So I walk by faith and not by sight
we praise your great name, unrivaled, unmatched, the name above all names, the name that has saved us, the name that's rescued us, and the name through which we can bring everything, every issue of our lives before the Father's throne. So Lord, we praise you and we worship you. And in this time here today, we bring before you, Lord, some of those that are on our heart. We come and we pray today for all those in this time of lockdown, those who are shielding, those who are vulnerable, those who are struggling in this season. We lift them up to you. And we pray that your comfort and strength will be so close to them today that they would know your presence, they would know your grace, even now that you would minister into their hearts. And we ask for this in the name, the mighty name of Jesus. We lift up to you today all of those who have been bereaved, so many who've been bereaved, and we ask for your comfort and your grace to be with them, that you would be so close to them in the journey of processing their loss, in the rawness of the emotion, in the pain, we ask that they'd know you walking with them. Be their comfort, be their strength. We pray in the name of Jesus. We pray for any who are sick, whether through COVID or through something else, and we speak healing today in the name of Jesus. We command sickness to go in Jesus' name. And we pray for healing to be released even now in countless situations and circumstances and pray for your strengthening and your help. Father, we pray again today for all our doctors, all our nurses, all our care workers and key workers, all those returning back to workplaces. We pray for your protection, for your strength, for your grace to do their job and to stand where you have placed them as bringers of the kingdom. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. And we pray in these days to come for our nation, for our leaders, that you would give them wisdom and humility and grace to lead us forward. We pray Lord, that you'd help our nation to protect one another and to make choices that are not selfish, but protect each other. And we pray Lord that you would bring us through this, that you would help us. And in the process that you would so do a work in the hearts of those in our nation, that you would be turning this nation back to you, that many, many hundreds and thousands of people would find their way back to Father God and find forgiveness in this precious and powerful name of Jesus. And we ask it in that name, amen. If you haven't done already and you have a prayer request, we'd love you to send it to uh, online at clmchurch.co.uk. Then we can pray as a team and stand with you in whatever challenge you might be facing in this season. So please do send your prayer requests in so we can pray with you and pray for you. Right now, we're gonna go to Mark Beswick and he's gonna bring us our notices. Thank you, Pastor Esther. Hello, church. Great to be with you today for Church Online. As you will be well aware by now, Church continues online and there are a number of great things to continue to plug into. So please keep up to date on the CLM website, clmchurch.co.uk on our social media at clmchurch.com. And there are just a few things that we especially want to profile today. Following on from the excellent Acts devotionals over the last few weeks, we have now got a superb devotional page on our website. You can access this by going to the website and hitting the online tab, and then you will see a page called Devotionals. All of these devotionals can be completed using the Uversion app, which is available for free on mobile devices and also via the Uversion website. Now, there are a wide range of devotionals that we have recommended covering a range of topics and also of varying lengths depending on what you would like to engage with next. Hey CLM Kids! Our CLM Kids team have been doing an excellent job behind the scenes putting together some engaging weekly challenges and activities. You can access these all on the family zone of our website at clmchurch.co.uk forward slash kids. Now we love seeing what our CLM Kids are up to so please, please continue to send in your work to us at online at clmchurch.co.uk. Now after a short break, our CLM youth team are back delivering some great content and connection points for those aged between 11 and 16. 
You can connect with CLM Youth on Instagram at CLM Youth Coventry. And be sure to tune into the Instagram Live, which runs Tuesdays to Thursdays at 12 p.m. midday. Now, season two of CLM Youth Online is also back. So be sure to head over to the CLM Youth YouTube channel and check out the videos which will be going live on Friday evenings each week. If you need pastoral care at this time, we encourage you to reach out to your life group leader or serving team leader. But if you're not currently in a life group or serving on a team, then you can drop us an email to pastoralcare at clmchurch.co.uk. Alternatively, you can phone us at the church offices Monday through Friday between 9am and 4pm on 02476 226 698 and we'll see how we can support you. It is only one week to go on tomorrow until the official launch of Open Heaven and we're excited for the churches of Coventry coming together to prayer walk every street in the city through the month of June. For those of you who follow Open Heaven on social media, you will already be aware that the app is now live. So you can access the app by going to the Open Heaven website, www.openheavencoventry.org, where you'll be able to register and then earmark the streets that you are going to walk as part of this significant initiative. So why not do that this week? You can even begin to make an early start. You don't have to wait for the 1st of June. Now that's all for me today. I'm going to pass you back to Pastors Martin and Esther. Mark, thank you so much. Also, we want to say such a huge thank you to all of you that have been busy painting and drawing and colouring your rainbows and sending them into us. It has been so beautiful to receive many of them. And I think you'll be able to see on your screen now a selection of the rainbows that have already come in. And we have started to put them on the front of our building in the cafe windows. And if you go past our building, you'll be able to see them. Now, we've got to admit our windows have got a little tint in them and they're not quite as vibrant as we perhaps first imagined but they can still be seen and they are a symbol of hope so thank you they are now up and we'd love you to still send in your rainbow pictures so we can fill out those cafe windows you can do that by posting them into us at church clm church parkside coventry cv12 hg drop them off during office hours or you can take a photo of them, getting them nice and square in the frame and then email them in to online at clmchurch.co.uk and we'll print them off in colour and put them up in our windows. Thank you. We're conscious that for many people, this is a really challenging season of economically and financially. And so we want to let you know if you're part of the CLM family, uh, that there is a hardship fund and it's there so that if you are struggling, if your outgoings are more than your income, if you can't meet the essential costs of living, then we want to let you know that you can apply to this hardship fund so that we can in some way help you through this season. And there's a, a number of ways that you can do this. You could speak to your life group leader or serving team leader or simply email either jonathan at clmchurch.co.uk or online at clmchurch.co.uk and we'll send you a really simple application form and explain everything you need to know. So please don't hold back and let us uh, be part of the answer of helping in this season. That's so wonderful. And as part of our worship right now, we're gonna bring our tithes and our offerings. We want to encourage you to continue to be generous and faithful. If you're visiting us today, please don't feel in any pressure to give. If you're part of another church, please give to the church where you worship. But if CLM is home, we encourage you to continue to trust God and to sow into the ministries and the mission. You can do that really simply by going to our website, hitting the giving tab, and there you'll see our bank details where you can either set up a standing order for every month or, or whenever uh, the regular way that you get paid, uh, or you can make a simple bank transfer to us. If you're redeeming a vision pledge, you can do that that way also, or you can hit the online button and you're taken through a simple process where you can give by debit or credit card. The third way that you can give, if you are giving an amount up to and including 20 pounds, then you can simply text CLM Give followed by the amount in numbers to 70085. And that way uh, you can be part of the worship and part of the offering. Uh, if you need to come out of the broadcast to do that and you don't wanna do that right now, we'll leave the giving details up right at the end of our service. But as we bring our offerings today, let's pray. Father, we thank you because you 
are Jehovah Jireh. You're the provider. That's who you say you are. And we thank you that so many of us, we have testimonies of your faithfulness to us, of how you've met our needs, of how you've kept us through all manner of circumstances. And we remember it today and we thank you. And so as we bring our offerings again today, we put our trust in you. And we pray that you'll help us to not be afraid, but to keep trusting in you. And I pray Father, for all of your people, as they bring their offerings to you, that you would open the floodgates of heaven over them, over their lives, over their families, over their businesses. And Lord, that you would prosper them and help them and that you would keep growing us to be a generous church who can be part of the answer in our city and nation. And so we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we give, we're going to leave the giving details up on the screen as we head back to the band and continue in our worship. And then you're in for a treat because our great friend, the wonderful speaker, Mark Ritchie, is bringing the word today and that will follow on straight after the next song of worship. Sing Amazing Love Church. Amazing love that welcomes me. The kindness of mercy that bought with blood.
Hi, I'm Mark. I'm Scottish. I live in Nottingham and uh, I'm married and I've got two kids. Now, being Scottish and living in England is normally absolutely and totally fine. The only time that it's a little bit of a problem is during the Football World Cups, right? Because my son is like born in England. He's an English lad. And he's always like, Dad, you've got to support England. Come on, get, get behind the lads. And I'm Scottish. And, and I really try. I'm like, mm, come come on, England. and But, you know, England are normally really, really kind and they normally get knocked out nice and early. So it's all good. But last year at the World Cup, England did amazing. They got right the way through to the semi-final against Croatia. Semi-final of the World Cup. My son Jordan's like, Dad, you've got to support England. I'm like, oh. I do really. So I decided to phone my dad. Now, my dad is Scottish. He has lived in Scotland his whole life. He's been a minister in Scotland for the last 50 years. And I rang him up on the morning of the match, England against Croatia. I says, Dad, are you going to support England against Croatia? And my dad said to me on the phone, he said, son, all of the Scottish churches were singing I am a new Croatian. And I was like, oh, wow. That does not smack of unity, does it? It does not smack of unity. I am a new Croatian. Brilliant. Well, listen, um, I was chatting to someone the other day, and we were talking about the kind of shows that we watched when we were kids. I don't know if you are my generation and you were kind of watching Multicolored Swap Shop or maybe you were kind of the Tiz Walls guy or maybe, you know, uh, the, the, the new shows are more the things you watch. But one of the TV shows that I watched a lot when I was a kid, yes, was Tom and Jerry, the cartoon. And what's hilarious is that when my kids were growing up, we used to put the video of Tom and Jerry on all the time and our kids were crazy for it. Now, I don't know if you can remember this one character in Tom and Jerry and that was not the cat and not the mouse, but it was the dog. I loved the dog. The dog would be there. Normally, he would be sleeping in his kennel and it was always the same scene. The cat would go flying past and wow, the dog's kind of sleeping and then he'd open like one eye and he would see the cat and then suddenly he would spring up into action and he would run after the cat. And there would always be this scene where you thought, oh no, the dog is actually going to get the cat. But the same thing would always happen. Without you realizing, there was a chain. And the chain had been unfurling the whole time. But then it got to a point, just when the dog was about to get the cat, the chain yanks the dog back. And the dog traipses back to the kennel. It was always the same scene. I found it funny as a kid. Now my kids found it funny when they were kids. And then... It's that sense in which the dog thought he was free, but actually he wasn't free. And, um, you know, in the Bible, Jesus says these amazing words. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. John 8 verse 36. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. You know, you may have kind of started watching this, you may have flicked online or whatever, and you've got this on your screen, and you might be thinking to yourself, well, am I free? Am I really free? Jesus says that none of us are free, that, you know, actually, we're all a bit like that dog. We think we're free, and we think we're winning, and then, boom, something happens in our life, and we're like, ah, oh, do you know what, actually, I I I'm not as free as I thought I was. And yet Jesus says, who the Son sets free is free indeed. You know, I want to say to you today that all of us, we want that freedom. All of us want that freedom that Jesus is talking about here. None of us want to live our life like that dog where we keep on getting to the same point and then we get yanked back. 
You know, maybe there are some people watching this and you're thinking about certain habits or certain life controlling things that, you know, you, you, you seem to be making progress. You seem to be getting somewhere and then boom, the chain just tightens and you traips back to the kennel. You know, I know that there's been times in my life when I felt like that. There's been things in my life where I've really felt like, oh man, this habit, I, I feel like I'm getting a bit better. I feel like I'm getting sorted with this. And then, boom, I get to a point and trips back to my kennel, back to the doghouse, back to that place where you thought, oh, I can't believe I'm here again. I don't know what it might be for you. Maybe it's a certain kind of point in a relationship. Maybe it's a certain thing, a habit, a horrible thing that you keep on doing, a cycle thing that you keep going round and you get to that same point. And when you hit that point, your back, that chain is pulling again. And yet here we do see that Jesus says in John chapter 8, he says, who the Son sets free is free indeed. Jesus is offering us real and true freedom. And so we begin to think, well, what is Jesus talking about? Jesus is talking about being free from sin. Now, before you kind of go and you think, oh, here we go. Here's a Scottish guy probably going to get his massive Bible and knock me over the head with it. You know, often sin is not always what we think it is. You see, when you start thinking of this word sin, um, I, I did have a laugh the other day because I mentioned it to someone. And they, they genuinely were like, oh, yeah, I think sin. Isn't that when you like eat a pie and you're in one of those diet things? I was like, oh, my goodness. No, we all have different thoughts when it comes to sin. But what does the Bible mean when it says sin? You see, what the Bible is saying is that we have these things that like stop us from being what we were made and created to be. And it's called sin. God wants you to succeed. He wants you to thrive. He wants you to absolutely just really live life in the fast lane. He wants you to completely and utterly succeed. He's got blessing for you. And he's got absolutely wonderful, incredible goodness for you. But yet all of us have this thing that stop us from thriving with Jesus, and it's called sin. When I was a young lad at school, I was like maybe about 14, I did my swimming badge, and uh, I'm like a decent swimmer, and I really loved it, and I was going along each week, and, and it, it, it was going well. And then one day the teacher said to us, next week, everybody bring in your pyjamas. Bring in your pyjamas and we're going to jump in the pool in our pyjamas. Oh, you know, as a young guy, I was thinking, this is amazing. I'm getting to the, the, the stuff that I wear in bed. I'm going to jump in the swimming pool. Whoa, what could be more exciting for a young teenage lad? It was like, come on. Well, I uh, turned up on the day with my pyjamas and we all jumped in the pool together. And then we'd started to swim lengths. And you've probably guessed already what happened. You know, I'm quite a good swimmer and I'm decent. But as I was swimming, of course, what happened? The pajamas in the water began to weigh me down. And I couldn't swim to the strength I had before because this is weighing me down. And friend, as you're watching this now, that is what sin is. You see, sin is that thing that holds us back. It weighs us down. It stops us from living life as we were intended to live. God designed you for amazing and wonderful things. And yet this thing holds us back. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 12, it says this, the sin that so easily entangles us, it weighs us down. Let's throw it off. Because that's exactly what happened at my school. After a little while of us swimming and not getting very far, then guess what? My teacher shouted to everyone, okay, everyone, 
pull off your pyjamas. And of course, what happened was there we were in our swimwear and we were now able to be back to that full strength. You see, that is exactly what Jesus did at the cross. He came so that we could rip off the sin, take off the stuff that weighs us down, holds us back. Imagine if I said to you today, I want to give everyone that's watching now, I want to give you a Ferrari, an incredibly fast car. But then I say to you, ah, but guess what? You're going to have to take this caravan everywhere you go. One of those big, huge, dirty caravans that probably you've been stuck behind on a holiday once. You know, imagine you're in this incredible sports car with all the potential to really fly but yet you're dragging this caravan behind you. And that is like our lives. God has designed us and created us for wonderful and beautiful and incredible things. And yet, even though we're designed for that, we're dragging this caravan of sin behind us. Guilt, fear, all kinds of rubbish. <sighs> you see, Jesus says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. He wants you to be that Ferrari, no longer having to drag that stuff behind you. I, uh, I went to Africa a few years ago with my wife, and we had an amazing, amazing safari. And uh, it was one of those where you actually camp round the fire. Uh, there's no hotels or lodges, but you're in tents. And uh, honestly, the animals were really close. It was so cool. It was so fun. And uh, we would every night gather around these beautiful big campfires. And in the afternoon, the driver, now I got on amazing with the driver. He was a big Kenyan guy called John, and I loved John. John had this laugh that he used to do that I used to really crack up at. Because John would laugh like this. Ha, ha, ha. He, he. Three has, two he's, job done. And uh, no matter what you did, no matter how you made him laugh, he always had the same laugh. Ha, ha, ha. He, he. And uh, I asked him once, John, where did you get that laugh? And he said that he saw it in a cartoon book and he decided, that's my laugh. I love that. I don't know if I actually have ever chosen my laugh. I thought they just came naturally. But John, he chose his laugh. Great stuff. And John and me got on brilliant. And one time John says, come on, we're going to get some firewood. And we got in the truck and John and me were having a laugh. It was just him and me. And I says, come on, John. No one else is watching. Let's go. How fast can you get this baby to go? And he got it screaming. We were hitting 90, 95 miles an hour. The whole truck was shaking, but we were really cracking some serious distance. It was fun. But then John says, come on, we need to actually get the wood now. I thought we would get some bags and we would put some dead wood in some bags. But no, no, no. This was safari style. And what we did was... John found a dead tree and we got this big chain and we chained, the, ch the chain was in the back of the truck and we put it, tied up this dead tree and we dragged the dead tree back to camp. How many of you know that of course we couldn't hit speeds now? Of course this truck could no longer go very fast and wasn't able to reach its full potential because we were dragging this dead weight behind us. And that is what the Bible means when it talks about sin. You have been created and designed to go at wonderful speeds, to do incredible exploits, to be fantastically glorious. That is how you have been designed and created to be. But we drag behind us this dead wood, this dead sin. You know, when we got back to camp, the first thing that John did was he got the, 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 the tool and he broke the chain and the, the, the tree was left there in camp. And of course, now the truck could go as fast as it wanted. And this is the story. The story is, is that we can be free. And what it is that breaks the chains of our life, it's not self-help. It's not trying to be just 
the very best religious person we can be. None of that is what the Bible says. The Bible says it is through the power of the cross. It is the cross that breaks the power of the chain and we can be free. Now, you might think, well, what, what does the cross? You, you've just said about the power of the cross. What does the cross mean to me living today? In my modern existence, what is this Jesus dying on the cross? Well, let me tell you it, the best way in a story about a guy called Wally Fraser. Now, Wally Fraser is a, an old Scottish guy. He's in his late 80s. And he lives up near Aberdeen. And Willie used to like going out on an evening for a drink. And he lived in the countryside, right up in the north of Scotland. And just a couple of Januaries ago, Willie Fraser went out on a Saturday night for a couple of beers. And uh, it was pretty late when he finished having a few drinks and he'd got a bit of a stagger going on. But he walked across the fields back to where he lived. He was headed home. But, you know, there was quite a lot of snow and it was cold. And even though Willie Fraser was an old guy, he still managed to get through these fields. But the story is, is that Willie Fraser got to a barbed wire fence and in trying to get over it, and maybe because he did a bit to drink, he wasn't his full self, he actually got himself tangled up in the fence. And the more that he tried to pull and get untangled, he actually got more and more tangled. Until there he was, all caught up in this fence. This old man in the middle of the night, tangled up in a fence. And with the Aberdeen freezing Scottish weather, he was there. He started to pass in and out of consciousness. We got told later, the expert said, that if Wally had been left in that state for many more hours, he would definitely have died. But... The story is this, is that Wally's friend was out walking his dog at 4.30 in the morning. True story. I've never walked a dog at 4.30 in the morning, but this guy was out there doing it. And he was out walking his dog at 4.30 in the morning, and his dog was alerted to something. And the friend ran over and immediately recognized that this was his mate, Willie Fraser, trapped, tangled up in this fence. And what did he do? What was the first thing he did? He did not care about the barbed wire hurting or cutting his hands. No, the first thing he did was he began to rip the wire with his hands. And the, the, this wire, the barbed wire was shredding his skin and it was bleeding and bloodied. But he didn't care because he was ripping this fence and he managed to get his friend off the fence. And then he was able to get some help and he got his friend to hospital. And brilliant story is that Willie Fraser is safe, alive and well. And that is the incredible story of the gospel right there. What the cross means. You see, friend, this is the true story. Is that our home is safe in the arms of God. That is, God has designed you and designed me that we would come home into his arms. But you know, on the way to trying to get home back into the arms of God, we've got tangled up in this thing called sin. Just like Willie Fraser had got tangled up in that fence, so we too have got tangled up in our sin. And, you know, I don't want to alarm you, but friend, I'm just wanting to say that the Bible says if we stay in that state for much longer, then we will die. Just like Willie Fraser would have died if he stayed in that state, in that freezing cold weather. We will die, but not just a death at the end of our lives, but we will have this thing called eternal death, which is forever without God. Oh, man. What a horrendous story that oh, trying to get back to God, we've got tangled up in our sin. And there we are, kind of, if we stay in this state, we're going to spend forever without God. But the incredible story of the Bible 
is that Jesus was sent by God. For God so loved the world, he sent his son Jesus. John 3, 16. And that actually Jesus came and he did not care about his hands getting cut and broken as he died on the cross. His body, his face, his whole figure smashed against that cross. He did not care about getting broken and bust and beaten because all Jesus cared about was setting us free from this thing called sin. This thing called sin. And by Jesus dying on the cross, it meant that there was a way possible for us to be free from sin and that we would be free to be back into the arms of God. And as a young guy in a service, I remember it so well, hearing a speaker saying this kind of message on a stage. I was listening and I remember that moment of thinking, oh man, I am tangled up in my sin. I'm caught up in my sin. And if I stay in this state, I'm going to be forever without God. And I remember praying a prayer and saying, oh Jesus, thank you that you died on the cross, that you didn't care about your hands getting beaten and broken, that you ripped me free from this thing called sin so that I could be home in the arms of the Father. And I remember praying that prayer. And you know, I would love to do that right now. You're watching maybe in your living room or your, your bedroom or your kitchen and, you, and you're watching the screen on a phone or an iPad or, or your TV. And, and, you, and you can hear these words. Oh, friend, you know, I've wept over this little moment right now because I don't want anybody that hears this to be tangled up in their sin and be stay in that state and then spend forever without God. But I pray that in this next moment, as you just focus in right now, that you would maybe pray this prayer along with me. And that actually you would know what it is to be set free, just like we read earlier, who the sun sets free is free indeed. And that you'd be free to get home into the arms of Father God who is looking for you and is longing to see you. Would you pray this prayer with me now? Wherever you are, I'm going to just say a few words. Maybe you could pray them out loud or maybe you would rather just pray them in your heart. But just say them after me and God will hear that. God will hear that you are accepting that, yeah, you are tangled up in your sin. I, I admit I'm flawed, I'm messed up. And that Jesus is the one that can set me free and I can be back in the arms of my Father. Why don't you pray this prayer? Oh God, thank you that you sent Jesus. Thank you that Jesus came and set me free. He, he, he broke the power of sin. Thank you so much. And I say sorry for my sin. And I receive your freedom. I receive your freedom. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, you know, you, you become a Christian and, and, you know, I want you to get attached to a good church, pray your prayers to God. And wow, you know, you'll find out more at the end about what it means to get connected in with a great church. But, you know, the truth is, friend, is that who the sun sets free is free indeed. And we are free. Jesus has cut that chain, no longer yanked back to the doghouse, but actually free to thrive and to live in the Father's house. God bless you. Mark, thank you so much for that wonderful word. And if you just prayed that prayer, we would so love to hear from you so that we can get in touch and see if we can help you on your journey towards God. And all you need to do is send a text to CLM followed by your name to 60777. Then in the next couple of days, one of our team will give you a call and we'll see how we can help you. Well, our service has nearly come towards the close. And so we're gonna head back to the band for our final song, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
moment our service will come to a close and what we'd ask you to do is just stick around in front of the screen for one minute more because there's some additional information some things coming up things you want to make sure you are up to speed with and then after that why not reach out to someone facetime someone give somebody a call stay connected and make sure that we remain in community but as we finish now allow me to speak a blessing over you may you know the full freedom that comes from Jesus Christ. 
And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, remain upon you now and always. Amen.